What's up? What y'all got for me? Bobby, I got a question. What does legacy mean to you? And I mean the backdrop of all the stuff that you're doing and obviously the nomination. What does like legacy mean to you and how does it play to what you do? Um, legacy, I think it's something that you try um, not really to think about. You try to just move through your actions. You try to be the best player, best person that you could possibly be. Um, and I think at the end of the day, you want to walk away uh, knowing that you've made whatever situation you're in, whether it's with your family, whether it was a team, uh, better than when it was before you. So, um, you know, if you can give it your all and put everything into whatever you're doing and then walking away and make whatever that is better, uh, that's probably how I would answer that question. How does it tie into you taking the kids on trips and financial literacy and also health literacy? Um, I think a lot of that stuff is just things that, that come to my mind or things that come to uh, what it was that uh, maybe I didn't have or maybe I wasn't exposed to. A lot of the financial literacy stuff was um, came out of result of I didn't understand anything about finances until I got into the league. And so um, I didn't even know how to write a check until I got into the league. So it was kind of like the idea of if that's me, then I'm pretty sure there's more people um, like that and then kind of so on and so forth. So. A lot of the things that um, I kind of do is, is more so from experience or something that I've been close to that I, I felt the need to help. What, what does the man of the year honor mean for you? Uh, it means a lot. I mean, I think um, just highlighting some of the stuff that you do off the field, um, I think a lot of it was just like people pushing me because I, I didn't really like care to, to – um, I didn't really care that the work was being seen per se. It was just more so you had like friends, people from my team, obviously teammates saying that um, some of the stuff that I was doing would be more magnified if I, you know, kind of put more eyes on it. So it took a while for me to kind of embrace that concept. But um, I think it's, it's special, especially this one, because um, I'm assuming a lot of it comes around the, the comic book, which, which means a lot to me and, and a lot to my mom. And so. I think it's cool. What did you learn about the platform you as an athlete have that maybe, maybe like you said, you were reluctant to publicize it before, but what is the power of the platform of the modern pro athlete? Um, honestly, I, I probably feel like a lot of that came from Sherm. I probably um, just being able to use your platform in the right way. Um, and then people along the way um, kind of put it into my mind that, um, the more people, the more eyes that, that saw some of the things that we were doing, they can actually speed that process up. So if financial literacy was something I wanted to um, kind of help, if I was to, instead of do it by myself in silence, if I was to bring somebody with me or talk about it, um, maybe that would get somebody to help. And I think that's kind of what happened with the, uh, when we did the, the stuff for the kids with the lunch. Um, you know, Tyler, when I went to L.A., Tyler reached out to me to try to continue that because he had read it. And so it's something that we've kind of start doing um, over and over and over again. And so I think it's just that concept of just, um, it doesn't, it's okay to kind of say it out loud because you can bring people with you and they can help you move the needle faster. What would mom say to the, to the man you can come? Um, man, I, I hope she would be proud. I hope, um, it would be a split, split image of who she is and who she was. And um, that's, that's just me. I'm just an extension of her. So uh, hopefully she would see that and, and be proud of that. Does it mean something for you at all? I mean, obviously you came, weren't here last year and got to come back and all that. Did you kind of get this honor now? Back, yeah, for sure. I mean, because it's, it's a community that I've always been a part of. Um, it's a community that's embraced me uh, from the moment I stepped foot in here. So. Um, the way that they embraced me when I came back and just kind of getting back into the flow of a lot of stuff that we were doing in the community, um, I think it was cool. And they, even like having like some teammates, like seeing that and wanting to be a part of some of the, st some of the stuff we have coming up, I think it's, it's cool. When it comes to the game this week, how much did the extra day's rest help, just whether it's reset physically or, or mentally before another division opponent? Uh, I think combination of both. I think physically, obviously, uh, you know, having some time off. We played a lot of games in, in a short time. And so being able to have that rest, I think, is definitely going to help. And, and mentally, just being able to kind of step away from a moment, kind of reset, and, you know, find a way to get back in the W column. 
you haven't played much with Devin Bush before last week, at least in the regular season. Just how did you feel like it went out there? I thought it went well. Obviously, we, you know, communication, I, he, we practiced a lot together. I think he just hadn't had a, um, a chance to get out there on the field. So I uh, felt like the communication was good. I felt like he was flying around making plays. He had a, a, a big kind of one-on-one tackle um, that really helped us. So he, he did a good job. He pointed out that having played the Niners just a couple of weeks ago means that you don't have to study that team. You already know what to expect. Uh, yeah. I, or that, let me rephrase it, that it allows you guys to jump into what you guys are doing a little bit earlier, a little bit more than having to do the, the full install. Yeah, I mean, they're a good team. So I definitely feel like you have to, to study and you have to do the things, especially the way the game, um, you know, went the last time. Um, I think it's important to make sure that you, you own it. Um, but I think it is nice that you've played them two weeks, two weeks ago. And so a lot of that stuff is fresh. Um, you know, if you would have played them week three and then played them week 13, a lot could change um, personnel-wise, scheme-wise. Um, on, by, on both sides. And so I think it definitely helps um, playing them in a short period of time. And, you know, it's a chance to um, do the things that we wanted to do that game better. What makes McCaffrey so difficult to go against? Um, I think it's just his versatility, like his ability to, to run. I don't think he gets enough credit for how physical he is and how physical he finishes runs. But then also the ability to get out there, um, you know, when he lines up outside at, at number three or by himself, you almost have to treat him like a receiver. I think his routes are just as crisp as any receiver. Um, the quarterback is confident in throwing the ball up to him and making plays. I think he has every um, route. Uh, I think one of the, the routes he ran, he, he went, ran it out, came back, and they threw him the ball. So you have to be ready for everything from a running perspective, and you have to be ready for everything from a, a route tree. So I think that's what makes it tough. Do you think he could be a full-time slot receiver? I think if he wanted to, like, why not? I mean, he, he kind of does it to an extent, but you know, I think if you if you put him full time out there, I think you just take away from a lot of the stuff that he does um, in the backfield. So, I think they do a good job of balancing having him out and and bringing him back in, and then obviously you throw Debo in the mix as well. And so, um, you know, they're a good group. Did you watch their game live on Sunday? Oh, on Sunday, yeah, because it was like we playing. Those are two opponents coming up next, so. Kind of killing two birds with one stone. What do you feel like the defense is? Right, obviously you played two really good offenses the last couple of weeks, but in October you had that really good stretch just to statistically against the Giants and the Bengals and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, and the numbers obviously haven't been quite what you would want it, I'm sure, in the last couple of weeks. But then, I mean, I guess where do you feel like the defense as a whole is right now? And kind of how you guys are playing? I think we need to find a way to, to um, you know, kind of stop shooting ourselves in the foot. Like you said, we're playing some some really good offenses, and so some of the penalties at, at these costly times um, isn't helping us. I feel like we do uh, a better job with that. I think that kind of cleans up everything else because we're finding ways on some of the third downs to get off the field and things of that nature. But a lot of the drives that are extended comes from our penalties. And so I think if we can calm that, that, that penalty aspect down, I think a lot of our game will clean up. What's the challenge of San Francisco's pre-snap motions to you and what you're trying to communicate to your guys? Um, a lot of it is just um, trying to figure out how you want to adjust to it. Because some, some formations you want to slide the line, some formations you want to keep them the same. Um, some formations you got to figure out who's moving because you know, they come in with two tight ends. Maybe you don't want to move the line with that one. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. And then you treat, they treat the fullback like a tight end. And then they come out in the world uh, personnel and then McCaffrey's lined up at receiver. And so I think it's understanding what personnel they're in and at the end of the day, trying to figure out what does the final picture look like. And I think if you can do that, then you figure out how they're trying to attack you. But I think that's the biggest reason why they would do that is they want to mess the picture up. So they want to show you a formation, move around, make you think that they're in a different formation. But by the time you get the next steal shot, it was the same formation that they started in, but it doesn't look that way. So um, that's the thing, trying to have that quick and those thoughts quick helps because a lot of it is just to create angles, whether it's in the run game or pass game, um, that benefits them. Do you get that picture in game or are they constantly switching their motions and tells that you can't really get, you have to just rely on your preparation experience? And um, I think it's a combination of the two, but I think, uh, you know, if you study well enough and you understand what they're trying to do, um, you get a picture of it. Obviously, I always believe their first 15, any 
offense's first 15 um, is made to throw you off. And so once you get outside of that, then the game kind of closed down. So you think that that's more ruse than what their best attack is, those 15 plays? Uh, no, I think that I think the 15 most offenses first 15s is a combination between um, the new plays that they've put in, um, the new plays that they put in specifically for you, and then some special plays that they just want to try out. And so sometimes offenses get to those special plays, sometimes they don't, um, depending on how it is. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you watch that uh, Eagles game, they didn't expect to go three and out the first two drives, and so they had to switch it up and figure out what was going to work. And so sometimes that happens too. You have a plan, you try to execute that plan, and you have to be able to adjust quick. So I think it's a combination. But as a defender, you got to be conscious of what they're trying to do in those first 15 plays. And also understanding that could throw your, the things that you study off. And that come second, third quarter, that's when the things that you've been paying attention to kind of comes back into play. With everything they're throwing at you offensively, how much of a benefit is to be able to prepare for them on a long week like this versus the short week like you had last time? Um, I think it's, it's uh, you know, those extra days allow you to get a better feel for what the final picture is, um, I think. But, you know, short week playing a divisional opponent um, makes it a little bit easier because you've played them before. It's not like a new team that you have to study all over again. But these extra three days definitely help because, like you said, they're throwing a lot of stuff at you. They have so many different weapons, and all of the weapons that they have line up in the same spot. So at the end of the day, you're trying to figure out what are they trying to do um, whenever they get to their final formation. He talked a little bit about the preparation for the first game, and particularly maybe the young players, just maybe it wasn't as intense as it needed to be or whatever. Did you sense any of that kind of going into that game? Or? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't really play into that. I mean, at the end of the day, um, rookie, veteran, you're professional and you need to be ready to play. And so um, as much as he might want to take that on him, it's just still on us to go out there and play. He's not, you know, he's not playing. As much as he sprints up and, and practice, you know, we're the ones out there. Is there any benefit at all to uh, being able to watch your future opponent live, like you know, stuff they talk about on the broadcast or anything like that? Um, Definitely, the, the TV copies definitely um, help. Some some teams more than, than others because you can sometimes the – the mics pick up on a lot of the checks um, and things of that nature, so you could pay attention to that. But um, a lot of it is just watching football and see if you can figure out what they're doing while knowing that you ain't got to play them the next day. Speaking of like, picking things up, I'm sure you've got people telling you when Josh Allen was saying, using Bobby Wagner as a check. And yeah. About that. You, do you know anything about like, what I have no from? idea where that came from. Hopefully it's positive. Um, <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't come from something negative. And um, the plays that he's called it, they've done well. So I think they should keep it. When you're watching a, a live game like that, especially when it's an opponent that's coming up, are you, watch, like, are you watching the pre-staff movement and stuff and almost in a way calling out the play and then seeing if you're right? Yeah, for sure. I don't think I watch as a regular fan anymore. Um, you just – you're looking at the formations, you're looking at – the defense, you're trying to see what the defense is in, you're trying to see what the offense is, and then you try to see like how are they attacking the defense, and then you kind of put yourself in that situation. Like if that was you, um, you know, how would they play you or how would they um, do that? So I think it's, it's more just fun to watch the game that way and try to see if you can figure it out. Bobby, we heard that DK has been taking sign language classes and said that he's kind of been using it to be able to express himself on the field without getting penalized. So I guess what, knowing him, what, what are your kind of thoughts on, on that strategy and what do you think kind of about uh, what he's been doing? Um, I think DK is a very smart individual and I think the original concept of this, I don't know, and this is me guessing, so he's going to pretty sure come after this so you can ask him yourself. But I'm pretty sure that wasn't the original intent. I think it was just him trying to learn something that he was interested in. And then I think maybe because, you know, the refs were kind of had an eye on him, you know, he turned into sign language because not, not many people could probably understand what he's saying. So um, regardless of how you look at it, I think it's positive because it also sheds light on a language that people don't often get to understand, people don't often get to see and experience. And, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that, that do sign language that um, find what he's doing um, very cool and, and they, they feel like they, he's embracing him. A guy like that, um, seeing somebody that, that knows sign language, I think is extreme positive. So 
whatever comes from it, whether it's trash talk or not, it's to me it's positive. Is there, you mentioned the penalties. Is, is there an art at all to figuring out how the officials are now calling the game? Because obviously the other night it seemed like they were calling a lot of stuff, maybe more than a, a different crew might have, and then trying to adjust to that, or is that is that hard to do as games are going on? Or I don't I don't think there's an art. I think it's just a <clears throat> maybe an awareness. Um, you know, I think you you know who the you know who's officiating the game, and you know how they call the game for the most part, and so. Um, you have an idea of, of the things that they tend to call, uh, but you just don't know in that game are they going to call it a lot. A lot of it di is dictated by the the way the game is going, but you you never know. Uh, you never know how they're going to call it. I think at the end of the day, you just try your best to play clean and don't give them anything to look at. The PI that they called against you when you uh, went back and looked at that, what did you think of the call? Um, I thought it was a bang, bang play. I thought the ball was right there. Um, the way I looked at it, I, I, I actually thought that it was more in the area of him catching it. It was a little bit, it was thrown outside, but the timing of it, if the ball would have been in his stomach, would have been the same. But um, they called it differently. And um, like I said, I, you got to adjust. If that's how they call it, you got to figure out how to do better in that play. There you go. Thank you. Cool.